you should be looking at page five of your class notes. We're getting ready to study um, the last type of transformation. Uh, this transformation is called a rotation, and rotations are probably the least intuitive of all of the transformations. Before we can talk a lot about rotations, we need to do some reviewing about the coordinate plane itself. You remember way back at the Near the beginning of the year, we talked about how the coordinate plane is divided into four equal parts called quadrants. These quadrants are formed by the intersection of the x-axis and the y-axis. And if you look at that intersection, you can see that I've marked out the 90 degree angles. When the x and y-axis intersect, they form 90 degree angles. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to label the quadrants. So this top right quadrant is quadrant one. And then we're going to move in a counterclockwise direction to label the rest of the quadrants. Here we have quadrant two. Down here we have quadrant three and then quadrant four. And the other thing I want to remind you of is about the signs of any point in a given quadrant, okay? For any point in quadrant one, I know that its x-coordinate and its y-coordinate are both going to be positive. That's true for any point that I would pick in quadrant one. In quadrant two, I know that my x-coordinate is going to be negative because I have negative values for x in quadrant two, but my y-coordinate will be positive because in quadrant two, I have positive y-values. In quadrant three, both my x and y coordinates are going to be negative. Negative values of x here, negative values for y. And then in quadrant four, I'm going to have a positive value for my x coordinate and a negative value for my y coordinate. Okay, the next thing um, we need to talk about is rotations. When you're working in the coordinate plane and you're talking about a rotation, a positive rotation would actually reflect a counterclockwise movement. So we talked a little bit about this at the beginning of the year. If you were to picture a clock face set on top of this coordinate plane with its center at the origin, and next imagine only a minute hand lying directly on the positive portion of the x-axis, and then start imagining that minute hand moving backwards in a counterclockwise direction. That would represent a positive rotation in the coordinate plane. If you had a negative rotation in the coordinate plane, you would be moving in a clockwise direction. Okay, now we actually need to start talking about transformations. Remember that every transformation begins with a pre-image and ends with an image. So once again, my pre-image is green. In this case, it's a point, and my image is red. And so we talked about that minute hand lying on this positive portion of the x-axis. Now I want you to picture this blue circle as the clock face and um, this green point being placed right at the tip of that minute hand. And now the minute hand is going to be rotating in a counterclockwise direction and we want to see where this point will end when we've rotated it 90 degrees. Every time we pass through a quadrant, we go 90 degrees, okay? So if we were to rotate this green point 90 degrees 
its image would end up here, right about at 12 o'clock. The other thing I want you to notice is the coordinates of my pre-image and my image. And I want you to notice that it looks like the only thing we've done is we've flipped the X and Y values. Okay, now let's talk about a 180 degree rotation. So once again, picture this pre-image being stuck to the tip of a minute hand. That's moving in a counterclockwise direction. We travel through the first quadrant and we cover 90 degrees. We travel through the second quadrant and add 90 more degrees for a total of 180 degrees. So if we were asked to rotate a point 180 degrees starting at the positive end of the x-axis, this is where we would end up. Once again, look at the coordinates. Here I have a 4 and a 0. Here I have a negative 4 and a 0. So we're still using the same numbers, but this number has a different sign, right? The 4 has a different sign because now we're in the second quadrant and we know that all our x values are negative. Our x coordinates are negative in the second quadrant. What would happen if we were to instead rotate this green point 270 degrees? That would mean we would pass through three quadrants and we would end up at the six o'clock position right here. And here are our new coordinates. Here are our image coordinates, or rather our pre-image coordinates, and then the coordinates of our image are down here. Once again, note, we have the same numbers, but a difference in sign and a little bit of a difference in position. And then for the 360 degree rotation, we start here with our pre-image on the x-axis and travel in a counterclockwise direction all the way around until our image is sitting right on top of our pre-image. And look, they have the same coordinates. Okay, we started uh, with rotations that originated from the positive side of the x-axis because those are the easiest to see. But now, in this second set of graphs, I want to look at what happens if we start at a place other than uh, the x-axis, the positive end of the x-axis. The first thing you need to know is that when you rotate 90 degrees, you move to a new quadrant. For every 90 degrees in a rotation, you move to a new quadrant. You move to the next quadrant. So here, we started, our pre-image is right here, and our image ended up in the next quadrant. Now I have the coordinates from this graph right down here. These are our original coordinates for our pre-image, and then here are the coordinates for our image. And you can see once again, we're noticing that pattern where um, we've switched or we've flipped the values and there's a difference in sign. And once again, the reason why there's a negative sign here for our x-coordinate in our image is because we're in the second quadrant and all x values are negative in the second quadrant. What would happen instead if we picked the same starting point as we had over here, but instead we rotated 180 degrees? Well, rotating 180 degrees is like making um, two 90 degree, two consecutive 90 degree rotations, right? And we said that every time we move 90 degrees, we move into a new quadrant. So now we're going to move over not just one quadrant, but two quadrants. So this is going to put us into the third quadrant, a 180 degree rotation. 
given our starting point, we have passed through two quadrants. Um, another thing that's interesting about 180 degrees is that I could draw a line right through, uh, and that's pretty bad. Let's try this again. My goal is to draw a line um, from the origin, and it should go right through both points because they're exactly opposite each other. And here we can see our coordinates before and after the 180 degree rotation. We're using the same numbers, now they're in the same position, but the signs have changed. Also, I want you to look at the difference here. From our 90 degree rotation, this was our stopping point. If we look at the difference between stopping at 90 degrees and stopping at 180 degrees, this would be like a 90 degree change. Here's where we, here were our coordinates at 90 degrees. Here are our coordinates for 180 degrees. What we're going to find is that for each 90 degrees we travel, our coordinates are always going to flip their positions. So here we just flipped the X and Y from here to here. Our, our X became our Y over here. Our Y became our X over here. And that's going to happen for every 90 degrees that we travel. We'll flip coordinates. And if you look at the coordinates here for our 180 degree rotation, our ending point, if you see we have negative coordinates, um, negative values for both our x and y coordinates, that's because we ended up in the third quadrant. And remember, in the third quadrant, our points always have negative x and negative y coordinates. So hopefully you're starting to see a pattern. Okay, we're going to look at a 270 degree rotation next. Remember um, that each 90 degree rotation is going to bring us into a new quadrant. So uh, 270 degrees is made up of three 90 degree rotations. So we should move three quadrants. So here I move 90 degrees, I move one quadrant, two quadrants, three quadrants. So now I'm in quadrant four. I started in quadrant one. I moved three quadrants into quadrant four. If you are to look, if you were to look at the coordinates of our new point, the, our pre-image or rather our image point, you can see that we've just kind of switched the positioning of the coordinates here. We're still using the same numbers, okay? Um, and then the other thing I want you to do is to look here. Here is our stopping place for our 180 degree rotation. And then we moved 90 more degrees, right, to this 270 degree rotation. And look what happened again. From a 180 degree rotation to a 270 degree rotation, our y value, or rather our x value, became our y value. Our y value became our x value. And if you would look at the signs here, they reflect the fact that this point is now in the fourth quadrant. Because in the fourth quadrant, we will end up with a positive x coordinate and a negative y coordinate. And that's exactly what we have down here. A positive x coordinate, a negative y coordinate. And then obviously if we move 360 degrees, we're going to end up right where we started from. But once again, I want you to note that here, this is our stopping place after we've moved 90 degrees, or after we've moved 270 degrees, if we move 90 degrees more, we'll be at 360 degrees. That means 
we've had a 90 degree change between these two points and we flipped the coordinates. Um, the 2.7 for our x has now become 2.7 for our y. Our y value has become our x value and the signs of these coordinates reflect the fact that this point is in the first quadrant where both x and y co coordinates are positive.